A question I keep hearing is how can you use Vuex in a Vue 3 application? This previously wasn't possible, but thanks to the release of Vuex 4, it now is. In this tutorial, we're going to dive in and create a simple component using the Composition API and a Vuex store, and we'll do it right after this. All right, so the first thing that you want to do is head over to the Vuex GitHub repository, and you'll see that when you land on this, you're actually landing on the current latest stable version and not the version that we want to take a look at today. So if you go down to branches and you'll see a 4.0. So 4.0 is everything that we want to look at for view three. And so this would be a good time to take a look at the source code. There's also examples in here. Uh, this is really where I started diving in and learning how to use it. I also want to mention one other thing. There was some confusion. I actually posted this link over on Reddit and people were asking if this was the version that was going to simplify mutations and actions. And in fact, it is not. This version four of Vuex is really just going to make it compatible with Vue 3. Uh, Vuex 5.0 is where we should see that simplification of mutations and actions. And quite frankly, I'm not even sure if that's still like the, the case, but I think that's what's happening. I'm not on the Vuex team, so I don't know, but from everything I read and gathered, that seems to be the case. So when you're getting Vuex 4.0, you're just getting the Vue 3 compatible version. But <clears throat> you don't even need to look at this if you don't want to. Again, the examples are good. I'm going to create a project from scratch and I'll show you how to include Vue 3 and Vuex 4.0 Alpha 1 and we'll go from there. So everything that we do today is going to be in this repository. Uh, head over to my GitHub account slash Dan Vega and you will find a Vue Next repository. So the source code is in there. I'll link that in the description below. With that, uh, let's go ahead, dive in, and create a new project using the Vue CLI. All right, so here I am on the command line, and I'm going to use the Vue CLI to create a new Vue 2 application. And then what we'll do is go ahead and add in the Vue 3 bits to make it a Vue 3 application. So there's a Vue CLI plugin that does this for you. If you weren't aware of this, I did a video on this. I will also link to that in the description below. So what we're going to do is we're going to type view create and we're going to type the name of our project, which is hello Vuex next. And I'm going to pass dash B in there just to create a bare bones project. We're going to come in here and manually select our features because I do want to add Vuex in here. So this is again a view two project adding the current versions of Vue and Vuex. But what this will give us is a good starting point uh, for a Vue three application. If you're watching this in the very far future, which could be a month or two from now, you may not have to do this. You can probably just do this from the command line and you're gonna get a Vue 3 application with Vue X. And that's great. Um, at, the, at the time of the release, that's what you should be able to do. But until both of those are released, uh, you need to go through some of these steps with me. So what I'm going to do is actually move into that project. So I'm going to CD into hello view next. Oops, view X next. And now what I want to do is add that plugin that makes this a view three application. So with view, we can use the view CLI plugin and we can add any plugin to it. And the plugin name is view next. So what this will go in and do is change our package.json to include view three. It will include our main or update our main JS to use the new global API. And uh, it also that's pretty much what it updates. So at this point, we can go ahead and open this in Visual Studio Code and begin working on our project. All right, so here we are in our project. And what we need to do at this time is we need to update Vuex because the current version that's installed is the latest stable inversion. And we want to work with the latest alpha version, which is the Vue 3 support, which is version 4.0.0 alpha 1. So what I'm going to do is come in here and say npm install Vue X. And if you use the at symbol, you can specify a version that you want to install, or it just 
if you don't do that, it installs the latest stable. So we want to say we want to go ahead and install 4.0.0, and that's alpha.1. So that should go ahead and install this in this project and update the version for us here in the package.json, which it does. And OK, we are good to go there. So now we got to start working on our app. So if we go into the store, the store looks like the store does. And this is kind of what you get when you install uh, the uh, a view application using the view CLI and pick view X. So what we want to do is kind of update this to what the current version is supporting and some of the view three stuff. So this, a lot of what we're going to go through is just basic. It's in the documentation, but we'll just walk through it. So the first thing that we want to do is we're going to create some state. So I'm going to create some state, and state is just going to be an object. And we're going to just be building a simple counter today. So I'm going to say count is equal to 0 by default. Then what I need is a couple mutations. So I'm going to say uh, mutations is equal to an object. And we're going to have an increment. Uh, which is going to take in our state. And all that's going to do is update the count by one. Next, I'm going to create a decrement. And that is going to take in some state as well. And then we're going to say state.count is going to decrement by one. So then finally, what we can do is we can export the default of create store. And we're not going to get any IntelliSense on that yet. And so IntelliSense is going to come from, so create store, I'm sorry, <laughs> create store, not IntelliSense, uh, is going to come from UX. So now that that's installed, that should, we should be able to import that create store. So create store is a method that takes an object, and inside that object, we're going to pass in our state, mutations, and then we could pass in more like uh, actions and getters and everything that you would expect in a Vuex store. Um, but for this, I'm just going to keep it real simple. We're not doing anything asynchronous, so I am going to just use a mutation. So now I have exported a default create store with my state and my mutations. Uh, so we can go ahead and save that. That is basically going to be our store. That's all we need to do here in our store. I'm going to come over to main.js. And so we're importing a view. Again, we don't need that. We're importing app. Uh, we are importing store. And then we don't need any of this. So the reason it kept that intact is because that was needed for the Vuex store. So what we're going to do is we're going to say const app is equal to create app. And create app is going to take in app. And we are going to get that from view. So again, this is coming from the new global API in view three. So now we have an app instance, and this is where we can then go ahead and mount the instance if we wanted to, but we have one thing that we need to do. We need to tell the app that we're going to go ahead and use the store, and then we can go ahead and mount our app, and we're going to mount it to a div of uh, an element with the ID of app. OK, so so far so good. We've updated our store. We've updated main.js to pull in the store. So it's still pulling in the store. Uh, we're passing that store into an app instance uh, to say, go ahead. And, and for this app instance, I want you to use this store. And then I want you to go ahead and mount this. So all that's left to do is we're going to come into app.view. And we're actually going to build out a simple counter application. So I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to go ahead and use the composition function. So I'm going to run setup, and I'm going to say store is equal to use store. So that's the composition function that the Vuex 4.0 exposes 
that we can then get at a lot of the state and mutations within our store. So now I can say const count is equal to, and this is going to be a computed, again, I don't know why I'm not getting IntelliSense here, but no big deal. Let's go ahead and import computed from view, and let's import use store from view x, right? So that looks good. So now we have our computed function, and that is going to use the store and get at the state and get at the variable called count that is defined in our state. I don't know what's going on with VS Code today, but it's acting like it is running the show here and it is taking over. But no worries, we're gonna work with it. So next I wanna create a function and this is gonna be increment. And all this is gonna do is it's going to commit a, mu commit a mutation to the store. So I'm gonna say store.commit and the name of it is increment. Um, and again, I'll, we'll look at that in a second here. So if we go back to the store, remember we named our mutations increment and decrement. So we're gonna create another function here called decrement. Again, this could be called whatever it wants, uh, but we'll just stay consistent here. And this is going to commit a mutation called decrement. So I think that's it. Now all we gotta do is go ahead and return anything we're gonna use in our template. So I want access to count, increment, and decrement. So now here in our template, we're gonna go ahead and run count is equal to, and we'll display count. So remember, um, <clears throat> even though count is using a computed value or a computed property, uh, if you were to access this here in the setup method, you would need to say count.value. Uh, that is automatically unwrapped for you when you need to access it in a template. So we can just say count. Uh, so I'm going to create a button, and that button is going to be called increment. And I'll create, actually, let's do this. And that button is going to have a click handler, and we're going to call increment. And so let's just say decrement. Okay. So all of this looks good. Um, <clears throat> so we are going to have one problem. I think I'm just going to wrap this in a div. So in view three, you can get rid of this, but it's not in this current version of the view CLI. There's still an ESLint role that you have to go turn off uh, and I just don't feel like turning it off for this demo, so we'll just leave it. Um, if you're interested in that, if you're, if you're not sure what I was talking about there, um, View 3 has a new feature called Fragments and I will go ahead and link to a video that I've done on Fragments if you're interested in learning more about that. Okay, so let's just recap before we run this and see if this works. Uh, maybe we'll have problems, I'm not sure, but first we updated the store. So the store is going to take in some state mutations. Yes, I could have just probably created that in line in here, just like we normally do, but I just wanted to show you that these are just objects that we can then go ahead and pass into our create store method. And uh, we are importing create store from Vuex. In our main JS, we needed to modify a couple things. We're getting an app instance now using the create app method in the new View 3 global API. And then from there, once we have our app instance, we can do things like app.use and app.mount uh, to go ahead and set up our application here. And finally, because we are using that app.view, um, I'm doing everything right here in app. And all we're doing is creating a simple counter. We're displaying the value of count with some buttons to increment and decrement. We're importing this new composition function called useStore from Vuex. And when we call useStore, we get access to all the things in useStore. So we can say things like, hey, I want you to go ahead and get me the value of count, or I want you to commit a mutation. Um, and again, all the things that you would 
be used to using from Vuex are available there, so go ahead and play with that. So let's go ahead and see if I didn't make any mistakes. Let's go ahead and hey, npm run serve. Um, expect watch, or export watch was not found in view. I'm not sure where those are coming from. Export computed. Pause okay, the video fine. really quick because I was I couldn't figure out what the heck was causing that. For some reason, um, my package.json had reverted and we weren't using the uh, alpha version of view. We were actually using a view version 2.6. something. So hopefully this works now. View 3.0 is installed. So if we go ahead and npm run serve. I'm crossing my fingers here. Hopefully this will work this time. Okay, that looks a lot better. Let's go ahead and open this up and run. And so our current count is zero. And as we click increment, that value goes up. As we click decrement, that value goes down. So that's really good to see. Everything is working as we expected. Um, something I'm not sure if this is going to work, but I'm gonna click view. I don't know if Vuex is going to work here. And I don't even think the view dev tools works yet because it doesn't recognize view three. So um, yeah, uh, there you go. Some live coding in a recorded video. <laughs> so count to zero, we can increment and decrement it. Uh, and that is updating the store instead of using a property right here in our app.view. So cool, I think that's all I wanted to cover today. Exciting stuff, we're starting to see some of the supporting libraries get support for Vue 3. So this is going to allow us to really start to uh, play around with Vue 3 a little bit more and write some a little bit more fully functional applications, which I'm excited about. I'm excited about the future of Vue X as well. Like I said, some exciting things may be coming in Vue Five, uh, but right now it's really nice to see that Vue X is ready to go for Vue 3, or at least in an alpha version. Um, if you are able to go out and start testing some things in Vue X 4.0, the team would love to hear from us. So if you find any bugs, go ahead and log those on the GitHub repository. So question of the day, are you currently using Vue X in any of your Vue applications? If not, uh, what's holding you back from doing so? Uh, if you are, what are your, what do you like and what do you dislike about it? So I'll leave that question below. Please go ahead and leave me your answers. And if you found value in this video, friends, please give me a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and as always, happy coding, friends. Happy coding.